And we now open it up for questions uh, or comments. So I think I have a comment, first of all, from Tom Dusmit. Uh, please unmute yourself and uh, let us hear your comment, Tom, please. Well, I think everybody can read it from what I understand, but um, you were talking about building new clubs. I think caution's required um, and uh, a dose of realism as well. Um, for example, in Mississauga, uh, there's been a substantial consolidation of clubs. There were nine clubs at one point. I think we're down to about five. And that's probably the right number. So adding extra clubs is not necessarily the right answer in my view. And I just thought I'd bring that up. Um, different strokes for different folks, of course, different countries perhaps, and you have different requirements. But I think you have to look at things realistically and work with what you've got before you try and make something new. Grass isn't always greener on the other side of the fence. Yes, Tom. So when I say we need to start two clubs, if you have so many clubs, only two of them need to start. And that's for the district governor. I don't expect every Rotary Club to start a new club. And we need to start clubs only where there is a need. I would not know if there is a need in your area. We would not start clubs if there is no need. But I need to tell you there is an opportunity for doing that. If there is no need, please don't start new clubs. But I'm sure we can all get one member definitely. I'm sure Tom, you too will be able to get just one member and you would be able to inspire others also. I even understand in a small town, in a small village, there may be a small county where there aren't enough people, more people. That's why I said, all we need is 10% success and we will reach the goal of 1.3 million. If each of, our, of us succeeded in getting one each, then our membership would be 2.4 million. And that's not what we are wanting. And I know we won't reach there. That's not the idea also. So you Robert, are right. Horses for courses. I totally agree. Robert Gallo, Galloway, please uh, unmute yourself and ask your question. Thank you, Bill. Uh, and, and thank you, uh, President Shekhar. It was a, a very powerful uh, message and, and terrifically inspirational to, uh, to get me pumped up. And thank you for coming to District 7080. Uh, membership is the lifeblood. It, it's a terrific theme uh, uh, that, that, that you've mentioned to us about uh, uh, each one bring one. Are you going to continue with the August theme of membership? August uh, this past year was a membership uh, month theme. And if so, uh, what support can we see from Rotary International or the district to help us uh, uh, make that August really kick off, the, uh, uh, kick off the year and tie in with your theme? So... You know, I've always felt that if you made a contribution of $1,000 to the Rotary Foundation, you immediately get recognized for that. They'll send you a, a Paul Harris Fellow pin. There'll be a certificate. You give another $1,000 and you'll get another pin. There is a blue sapphire on it. You make another contribution, two sapphires, three sapphires, four sapphires. Then it becomes a ruby till it becomes a diamond, till it becomes four diamonds till it becomes an AKS member. So what I'm trying to say is every time you do that, you are being recognized. And I was always intrigued. We've always succeeded in foundation for the last 35 years. I've seen any goal that we set for Rotary Foundation, we've succeeded. And any goal that we set for membership, we've never succeeded. There must be something that we need to do. And I thought, while we do not do anything, we do not make that contribution for recognition. But still, there is a recognition. It is an acknowledgement of what you did. It is a way to say thank you. And I would want to get this started for membership also. Mm -hmm. So starting the next year, uh, every time you bring a member, the in new member is gonna get a welcome letter. If Bob, if Robert, you got a new member, I'll send you a personalized thank you note. Thank you so much, Bob, for doing this for Rotary. Do this again if you can. And, I don't know how many of you have been to uh, Rotary, uh, one Rotary Center at uh, Evanston, but on 17th floor, there is an Arch Club Society Gallery where you have pictures of all the people who have made up a large contribution. I'm getting a similar thing started for people who have got many members. This is going to be virtual. So if you've not gone to uh, 
the building you cannot see the arch club society but this society that's going to get started we haven't yet named it you will be able to see sitting where you are and the entire world will be able to see how many members sorry uh, darlin got or clinton got or linda got or amola got so that's another way of recognizing people who have gone up to 50 members or 100 members there may be some people i do not know i have crossed the 50 mark over the years 35 years i am aware but there may be some people so there would be uh, people who are recognized for that so these are things that we are doing to support encourage people uh, and we don't need to wait august is the august month to get members <laughs> but i would not wait up to august to me july is the august month to get members <laughs> thank you thank, thank you president district governor mike lowry ask your question please thank you bill uh, president elect shaker uh, thank you for joining us and i i wanted to just invite you to update us in partnerships that we have been talking about for a few years and in particular the current status of of our work with rotorax and toastmasters international so rotorax is no more a partnership it's now a type of membership as you are aware and i think it's one of the epoch making decisions that we have done in recent times uh, which means they are equals to us starting next year they will start paying their dues the moment they pay their dues we will know how many rotractors there are around the world because we will have data and once they start paying dues then they will have right also they would have done their duty of paying the dues and they will get their rights also and soon they will be able to start participating in programs and projects of rotary foundation also so i think that's a huge step that we have taken i see in very uh, recent future i fee- see that the membership of rotary will be considered as a combine of rotary and rotract membership because these are two different types of membership that's one about the other you asked me what was the other partnership that you asked me about toastmasters international toastmasters okay so that has i'm told that has been hugely successful there are a uh, huge percentage of clubs from around the world who are uh, using the uh, benefits that is from uh, the the program of toastmasters so it is a successful program and uh, as years pass i think there will be a uh, greater success in the program it's a successful program thank you Dan Dubriel, did you want to add anything to the comment you made? Uh, not anything. I could I could bring it up. Um, okay. Curious about what roles we're we're taking to strengthen our role in addressing COVID nineteen through uh, proactive vaccination programs, similar to what we did with polio. Can we can Rotary essentially own that globally? Yes. So the board of directors. recently it took a decision and a very good decision that uh, rotary is going to play a proactive role as far as vaccination is concerned uh, we all played a major role when uh, fighting against covid was concerned whether providing ppe kits or masks or sanitizers or uh, healthcare facilities etc we've done it across the world a great job and i thank uh, every rotarian for having done that the doctors have been uh, frontline people who have worked really hard for that uh, and now we want to play a role as far as vaccination is concerned but this vaccination is going to be quite different from what polio was there we had to go push the vaccination here i don't think initially we'll have to because the demand is far greater than the supply is right now but what we've decided is that every we are encouraging people to go meet the local authorities discuss with them is there a role that they expect us to do for example back in india uh, the government is inviting us because they ex- take the civil society to also participate in the process of vaccination and when it comes to civil society and vaccination they definitely call rotary because of the past experience as far as polio is concerned so there is a role there may not be a role it will all depend regionally so if we find uh, that there are countries where there is no uh, vaccine available and you have some influence over that country or some people in that country and you can help or somewhere some vaccine producer uh, you know of and can help in those countries that's another way we will be able to but i think that will come a little later not so soon thank you 
Nagawa, Abu, would you like to ask your question, please? Need to unmute yourself. Thank you for informative, interesting kind of presentation, which I love about that you speak about the connection between countries, between continents, Rotary Clubs. So my question is, how the RI supports the clubs in connecting them with different kind of clubs in other countries. It would be great if we can build such a connection. There are various ways of uh, finding where uh, there can be a connectivity between clubs. So the first was Rudy, for example, he was at the International Assembly and there was a pavilion which called Connect for Service. There were more than uh, 125 or 150 projects there where people were wanting international partners. These would have been from across the world. So that was the first opportunity, for example. Uh, the second would be all the govern incoming governors and I have a Facebook page. I would be able to use that leverage that page to, uh, let's say if there is a, a very nice project and people want that to get posted, uh, if the governors want that, or the governors themselves can do that there. If Rudy says, okay, I'm wanting to work with a club, maybe for a project, maybe for an exchange program or anything like that. If he puts there, he's gonna get a huge response. So there are similar platforms. There are other places. There are uh, uh, websites where uh, Doug and I have worked on a website where you could just go onto that website and put in your project. And over 10 days, 15 days, there will be other people who will connect with you. Once you do a project, there is a good connection for a long time there afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think you have a question that's been on the mind of many people for a long time. Hi, sorry. Um, so um, my question is that um, I'm the president for Rotary Club of Halton. Um, my club went from four members to 23 just in the last couple of months. And you discussed um, just gaining more members and membership. So I'm just wondering, how do we um, encourage more Rotary actors to join Rotary and transition into that phase? Great question, Adam. Uh, let me tell you one of the things that I had mentioned when I was interviewed for being the president was this, that I would want a better transition of road tractors to become Rotarians. And I think the step taken by Rotary as far as considering uh, Rotaract now to be a membership is one of the best possible steps that has been taken. Now, you will already become a part of that organization. You will not be a program, but you will be a part of the organization as a membership. So these are two different types of membership that you have now. Transitioning definitely becomes far more easy because your interaction with Rotary now is on equal platform. You'll be able to now do projects along with Rotary. You, will, you are now a member of Rotary. So thereafter, it's only moving from this to that. I think as time passes, this hot process is going to become even stronger. Rotaractors will find it far more easy to become Rotarians. And I'm aware that there are some places where uh, the Rotary clubs are saying, open their arms and say, okay, come for one year, no joining fees for you. Only the RI dues. Second year, only 50, just the RI dues and 50% of the dues. These are things that clubs can do if they need to, if they find that the road tractors find it a little difficult to afford it. But in two, three years time, uh, the road tractors thereafter would love to be members of the Rotary clubs. And there can be different ways of transitioning. And I must compliment you if you've grown from four or five to 23. Do retain all of them, Anam. Thank you so much. Romeo Mitchell, would you ask your question or make a comment, please? Uh, thank you very much, uh, President-elect. Um, I am delighted that you are a shaker, and uh, it, it's, it's great that uh, we will have many movers to support you. Uh, my question really relates to the fact that you were talking about membership growth. And what I'm finding is that there seems to be an emphasis 
uh, historical emphasis that, that's been focused on uh, basically sustaining members. I believe that sustaining and growth are not mutually exclusive. They go together. Uh, one of the um, you know, suggestions that I have, and I need your thought on that, I believe that we need to build a, um, a holistic uh, life cycle um, process that allows that uh, uh, activity to happen, such as having a life cycle that includes sustain, intake, grow, assign, renew, and back to sustain again. In that way, the membership responsibility, or the when I say membership responsibility, the person that's resp responsible for membership will have a, a holistic life cycle view, which is end to end, but yet continuous. What are your thoughts on that? I agree. Uh, I would say, let's say, if I bring a member in my club, while I do take responsibility of engaging that person, but the moment I bring that person to the club, it becomes the entire club's responsibility to engage that person. Right from the president, the board of directors have to assign some jobs to that new member mm -hmm. so that there is engagement. Uh, thereafter, there will always be attrition. Some people will be moving. Some people may uh, not want to continue anymore. They may have, there may be economic reasons, etc. It would be good to find, have exit interviews. Similarly, I say also entry interviews. So if somebody is wanting to become a member of Club Romeo and the expectations of that person is totally different for what your club caters, then it's best not to take that person in, but to suggest some other club to that person. So that would be an entry interview. If some members are leaving, there would be an exit interview. There should always be a regular monitoring. Where is that? Uh, what is this year's growth? Each year, are we wanting to grow? If I, we cannot grow, let's say you've come to a membership of 50 and your venue does not permit you to have more than 50 members, then it would be a good thing to start a new Rotary Club. So the cycle keeps going on and I agree, uh, there is not just one stage, it is uh, stage by stage. As you induct members, do a proper induction of them, uh, get them engaged into Rotary. Uh, over a period of time, you have to re-engage members also. Members who are 20 years, now they need to get re-engaged. Maybe uh, they have now taken a back seat. They only hear young people are to be brought into Rotary. I say everybody needs to be brought into Rotary, not just young people alone. Thank you very much. What you have reinforced is my assertion that I believe there should be a full life cycle. However, I don't believe that um, that the membership uh, chair should transfer the responsibility to the club as a whole to ensure that the continuous process happens. I believe that management responsibility from, for the membership should be continuous, but solicit support of, of the club, right? Otherwise, it could be interpreted as an abdication of responsibility once the member comes in. Um, and, and on the other point that you raised, which is um, the, you know, if someone is living the club, we need to think about it from the bigger picture. If someone is living the club, we have to tell ourselves they're not living Rotary. I am living the club because I'm relocating. Let's help them find another club that is convenient for their needs right? To keep them within Rotary. It's not about just keeping them within the club. But thank you very much. I, uh, you have my, um, my move-in support. Um, I think there's a, a question from Leslie Barmania that uh, ties into some of the earlier work. Leslie? Thank you so much for um, a wonderful presentation. Uh, very meaningful, very heartfelt, and in, in total agreement. Um, our district uh, uh, has been very supportive in general of uh, rotor actors and, and how we can include them on district committees. And we've done this for, for a few years um, and getting more successful at doing that. But one of the biggest challenges that rotor actors seem to face is that transition from a lower um, uh, uh, membership fee uh, which is very manageable to, and they might want to join Rotary, but that's a huge jump from the smaller $5, $8 US dollar fee, depending on the club, to 
what they need to pay as Rotarians. And many Rotaractors, while at school, totally understand, uh, you know, at university. And also there are other um, uh, challenges they have as they're starting a family or they're starting a career. But many ha are in very well-paying uh, careers uh, already. And with the raising of the level of the um, age limit, I'm just wondering if there are any, if there's any advice uh, for us as to how we can bridge that gap. How do we move people from there to here? So Leslie, good question. And I feel one of the answers to this is virtual clubs, you know. There are no dinner expenses. There is no transport expense. There is no, there's no meeting expense at all. Everything is virtual and the expenses come down. So that's a big takeaway that we have from this pandemic. We've learned that even sitting at home, we can do things and yet be connected. So uh, I would suggest that to be an immediate remedy as far as uh, membership fee is concerned. The other, I told you, apart from the Rotary International fee, there is nothing mandatory. It depends on the club. So the club, or maybe 40 Rotary, Rotaractors could come together to form a new rot Rotary club. Mm -hmm. where they decide, even if we meet in person, there's not going to be any dinner. Yeah, We'll just have tea, coffee or something like that. Because if you look at your club budget, I mean, your club fee, you will find that you pay more for your meals and meetings than you pay for uh, Rotary International. Yes. So yeah. I can think these to be the ways uh, that we can make it easy for the Rotaractors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, President-elect uh, Mehta, for all of your comments today.